Yo, friends! Gabriel Kevin here. Welcome back to another, another, and another, another installment in my suite of music tutorials for recording, mixing, mastering, producing, and all that stuff. And I use Studio One as my doll, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. If you've seen my other tutorials, you, you know that already because I say that in the beginning of everything. Just so you know what I use. If you use Pro Tools or other dolls, that's great because I usually present concepts which transcend the dolls, and I usually present and then I, not usually, but I then I present, you know, the techniques and stuff like that that I know. And please use the comments after you see this. If you have other ideas and, th and things like, hey, Gabriel, or hey, folks, you know, here's what I did. And, and or you can say, hey, Gabriel, that's totally wrong. And you know, that would just be civil. So, okay, cool. So, friends, what are we doing here today? <sighs> I think one of the more cooler things in Studio One, and I'm not sure if it's in other dolls. I actually, I started with Pro Tools. I don't remember this, but I'm sure there's something to be able to do this. So if you're using Pro Tools or Ableton or stuff like that, and there are other ways to do this exact same thing, you know, this doesn't have to be a Studio One end-all, be-all thing, even though I love Studio One because it's very intuitive and drag and drop, and you just plugged it. I don't have stock in the company. <laughs> I wish I did, but I don't. And this one thing is really cool because it, it provides so much ability for when you're mixing and producing and in Studio One, it's called the Arranger Track. So what is the Arranger Track? Well, it's basically a way to organize your song in the DAW. So up here, and Studio One calls these things tracks. So don't get confused. There's, there's no performance. It's not an audio track. It's not a MIDI track. It's just a track to manage stuff. So there's multiple things that can appear here. The first one is automation, but that's, that's not a track. That's within the individual tracks. And look at my automation and mixing tutorial. The next one is a marker track. And you can see it here. There's the marker track. I have it open. All this does here is shows it or not show it. It doesn't disable it. So if you, if you want to not show the marker track and you don't use it, you click this and it goes away. I use the marker track. Okay. And if you look at my track tutorial, it explains more about markers and start and ends and stuff like that. The next one looks like a bunch of boxes together, and that's your arranger track. So this opens the track or closes it. So I have it open. If I click on that, it'll close it, but it's still active. It's still there, and, and it'll show it. The next one's for chords. The next one's for tempo. And I do have a, a whole tutorial on managing tempo and changing tempo and changing tempos within songs. So that's where that will come into play. So let's get to the real guts of this, and that's the arranger track. All right, I love this track. Now, what does it do? Again. It allows you to put sections together and then you can color code them. And the first thing that actually benefits you is that it tells you where you're at. So, and again, you can make over here this horizontal zoom. If I make it real close together, and this is not changing any audio or anything, it's just a view. And I do this, you can see that I have an intro here and I have a chorus here and I have a verse here and it keeps going. Okay. So let's expand that back out. And that way, if I use this scroll bar and I want to go, where's the bridge? Where's that confounded bridge? Hey, who knows what song that's from? Come on, put it in the comments. Where's that confounded bridge? It's right at the end of, uh, of a very popular rock song from a very popular rock band. And every time I say bridge, if I'm going over like the Verrazano Bridge in New York, I'm like, <laughs> that just comes out of my mouth. Where's that confounded bridge? It's right in front of me. I'm on it. Oh, my God. Okay, stop digressing, Gabriel. And I go across here. Oh, there it is. There's my bridge. And now I can go, okay, I'm at the bridge, and I want to go down here and do something. Okay, so, and then here's my chorus ending, and here's my guitar solo, and another ending, and an outro. And I color code it so it makes it easy. And I can change the name, and I add whatever I want. So I can call it, you know, anything. So that's the first benefit you get from it. It shows you where things are. Now, I'm going to say something. I say it all the time, and whether you agree or not, it just makes life easy, and it makes the arranger track actually work well. You need, when you record, to play to a click or play to the metronome. Okay, and in my recording tutorial, I explain more why, but these grid lines here are very important. Now, you can have these grid lines in Studio One as bars, and, and I have these notes up here, so that kind of defines the interval between them when I'm moving around my cursor if I have snap to grid on 
But these bars allow you to set your arranger sections like this intro to be exactly on the beat, on the time. So why is that important? Well, it's important because if you want to take a course here, or say I take a course, there was say there was no course here. I started with an intro and went into the verse. So this wasn't here. I could literally, and I've done this in one of my songs, I'm not going to tell you, and take this course section here, which starts right on the bar. I'm going to put snap the grid on so it hits on the bar. Start, see, it's right on the bar, and it ends right on the bar. So it's in perfect time. And my performances within here will be in that correctly on the beat because I recorded myself vocally or guitar or whatever to the click track. Okay, so the other tutorial on recording will more explain that, but it's really important to play to a click or play to something that already played to the click and use that as your reference. Though I would always use a click no matter what. And it doesn't have to be a click. It can be a drum beat or whatever in Studio One. But please look at recording tutorial. Okay, so assuming you did that, and I did here, then I can... Now, these bars weren't up here. I, I created them. So I'm going to take this one, okay? And I'm going to right-click on it. And I am going to delete it. No! Yes, I'm going to delete it. Now, there's two deletes here. There's delete and delete range. Big difference. Huge. That's from another movie. Anyway. And this delete here will just delete that section bar up there. It doesn't delete anything underneath it. This delete range will delete that bar and everything underneath it and will pull this one in, this chorus, and the rest of the song out there to the beginning of where this one started. Right there. We're going to do that in a minute, but that's what, just be careful. You right click. If you want to delete this, this up here and recreate it or do something, you hit delete. And that'll go away, but look, all the performance and everything down below it is still there. Okay? So when you first come in, this will, this whole, and you open the range of tracks, it's all, it's all going to be blank. So how do you do it? So what I do, come here. And, there, you know, there's no definite, you, you should know where the beginning of your verse is and beginning of your chorus is. And that's one reason why you might want to use the marker track to, to mark where they are. Like this one has a number three on it. And the marker track, you can change the name of it, but we can talk about that in another tutorial. So I know where this is. So I just double click on the range of track here and it creates a little bar. Now it just created it, you know, randomly. And then you can take the end of it and pull it and take the end of this and pull it. To wherever you want it and now if you notice something it's snapping the grid because i have snapped the grid on and you want to have snapped the grid on so it's perfectly aligned at the bar okay it says verse so it, it, it makes a guess so if you right click this and that's where it says verse and i double click that then you can change it intro back to where it was i can change the color right here i click this so i can make it a, a really crazy color which I'm not going to do. I'm going to put it back. Let's just put it to, where was it? No, that guy. Okay. So I click out of that. Now I have my section defined. It's called intro, so I know what it is. And it's snapped to grid, so it's perfect. And everything underneath this is the intro. And you do this to me after you've done your recordings. Now, you can do it before the recordings. And then, you know, if you're, if you're recording to a click, it's going to fall within the range. I happen to do it after the fact. Okay, so what else can you do here? Well, the two things you can do here that really make, I think, benefit you creativity, cre creatively, creatively, <laughs> Cre sorry, creatively is I can, like I said, hey, I have a chorus here and I don't want it here anymore. Okay, I, I just don't want this chorus here anymore. I just wanted to go from intro to verse. I, I created this, I don't want it. Okay, so what you can do is, like I said, you highlight the section of the arranger, you right click, and you delete range. Now, I'm going to do that. It's probably going to take some time to do it, but what it'll do, it'll delete everything underneath this and take this verse one and everything in front of the verse one, because it assumes that you don't want a whole blank space here of no, no music. It assumes that you're going to move this over and eliminate this chord. So if, and I've done this. At the end of songs, I think even Wonderland here, if we go over to the right, 
that's one of my songs, one of the land. You'll see chorus ending three, chorus ending six. Well, I'm not that stupid that I think you go one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Obviously, I had chorus ending four and chorus ending five here, and that's exactly what I did. I deleted the ones in between because I thought there were too many choruses at the end. So, you know, when, when you write a song and stuff like that and you record it and you have your idea of your arrangement, and that's why this is called an arranger track, your arrangement of verse, chorus, intro, bridge, whatever, outros, intros, you have your initial idea. But once you put everything down and you listen back to it in a mix down and you listen to it over and over again, you're like, you know, don't fool yourself. It's like, is that, that, you know, that's too many choruses, you know. I, I, I want I want to get to the next thing or I want to end the song or I want to get this course out of here because I don't want it in the beginning. So again, it's going to take a second to do this, but if I right click and I hit delete range, now you can undo this as you can undo, undo anything pretty much. This will delete the range and I'm going to do it and we'll see how long it takes. But wait, oh, but wait, before you do that, oh, we always have something to say. Go down in this range, and this will just save you if, if you've done something that I've done here, and make sure everything in the range is within these two bars. This one and this one of, of the range, right? And you can, and as you scroll down, I'm using my mouse to scroll down, you can bring it right up to the bar. Okay, that's in there. Wait, this guy's, this guy's not. Okay, so there's something outside the range. So when I delete this, I'm gonna have to delete this tail here that I've put here into the verse because it would just sound silly being there. These guitars here, these are muted, that's why they look like that. They're within the range. They'll get deleted fine. Ah, wait a minute. I have a power chord leading into the chorus. So let's just solo that so you hear what it is. And in the core in the in the full mix. Okay, so that's intentional. I want that kind of power chord lead in. Cool. And it has to be before the chorus because it's a lead in. So what will happen? If I delete this range now, okay, it's gonna literally, and I'm gonna do this with Snap to Grid on, this is this is visually what's gonna happen. It'll actually, wait a minute, let me do this real quick. Highlight these two. I'm getting this cutting. This is just for example. It'll literally do that. So the chorus, pretend this chorus is gone. This verse is up here, and then you have this little bit of the uh, slide, hard guitar slide in there that you don't want because there's there's no chorus to lead into. Ooh, ah, ah, ooh. What do we do? What do we do? Well, first thing we do is we undo it. Okay, and I'm gonna undo the cut. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Before you delete a chord or you delete any range in the arranger track, scroll down, see what crosses over that range. Okay, so in this case, if I was using the intro and going to the verse, I don't need this. I would just delete these first so I don't have that little tail in the beginning, right? This one here, it would actually cut this off and leave this part here. So you may want it to go these things I know need to get out of here, so I may delete these manually first, or after I do the delete range and go down and say, oh, just get rid of that, get rid of that, and clean it up. And again, here's something that leads in. These are within the range. This one's a little bit off, but that's okay. If it's a little bit off, you wanna get rid of it, you just do this. Highlight it and pull it in, and then it's fine. I'll just undo that. So you gotta, you gotta do a visual and then make sure so it will literally cut it. I'm going down because a lot of stuff. Then I have down here, here's some clean guitars. This has a cut in the beginning of it, but it's on the line. That's fine. This one, that'll be fine. It'll cut it by itself. The bass here, this is the bass. That'll cut by itself because I played to the click. And that's why it's important because when it cuts this, if you didn't play to the click, it's going to cut right in the middle of a note versus in the space of a note, usually, when you, you know, usually have a space at, at, at the timing. So, dun, 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 kind of thing. So that looks good. So that will actually delete the range fine. So I'm gonna leave these guys here to prove my point. This guy and these guys, and we're gonna delete this range. Okay, right click, I'm scared, I'm scared. Okay, it's gonna take a second to do it, but let's do it. Delete range. 
and it's spinning. So we're going to sit here and we're going to wait as it deletes the range. Now, a lot of times, if you have a lot of processing in that, especially if you're deleting a range, which I'm doing, which I probably should have done it towards the end of the song, it has to take all that stuff at the end and move it forward, which it just did. See? Told you. Now, the verse is right after the intro and say bye-bye to that chorus. Now, let's see what happened. Now, all happened. Everything, this verse and everything to the right of it moved in. So everything to the right of it is okay still. So let's come down here. Remember I said that this little part would still be there? It's still there. And there's the front cut of that is still there. The tail end of this is still there. Now, this, this one over here, this lead-in, is from, you know, it was already there after the verse. So everything, remember, after, the, after that verse, it's still going to preserve. And so that's right. So I would have to delete these two, and I have to delete these two, get rid of them, right? Hit the delete key and get rid of them and clean it up. Now, and look, these little bars here, see a little tail end thing there. See it? And there's another one here. You know, you got to clean that up. Now, it's like, why do I have to clean all this stuff up? Well, you can clean it up before you delete the range, or you can clean it up after you delete the range. But deleting a range is a pretty major thing in my mind that you're making a major decision to do something like that. So a little bit of cleanup, I don't think, hurts anything. And then everything is moved forward. And look, the, the guitars were were cut out. The bass was cut out. Called a little caused a little cut line here. But, you know, that's just still sound fine from the intro into the verse. Is on our hand. One day I see that time was you can't even hear the difference because right into the verse. Is on our hand. One day I see that time was surely cool stuff, ain't it? Okay, I'm not going to undo that and waste your time. I'll undo it later. The other thing you can do is say you had intro and a verse here. That's the original way you arranged it, the original way you recorded it. But, hey, I want to add a chorus here. I want to go from the intro. I want to hit the listener with the chorus because it's really pretty and I love it. And then I'll drop dynamically into the verse. Now, the, the this kind of stuff, this kind of concept is producing. Okay? It's not recording. You've already recorded. It's not mixing. Mixing is something when you're producing, you use mixing and stuff like that to apply the producing ideas. So the producing idea says, I want to get rid of that chorus. Or the producing idea says, I want to add a chorus there. Okay? That's production. That's creating the end product, producing. Mixing is an art. But at the same time, producing is an art too. And that's what, you know, look at my producing tutorial and that gets into more detail there. And that producing tutorial is non-doll related. Just like most of my mixing tutorial is non-doll related because they're con it's conceptual. And I just use Studio One as, as a technique for reference. Okay, so say I wanted to copy a chorus here. So say this chorus here, right? I want to copy it and put it right here and I've done this to one of the songs of the five songs so if you listen to the songs I think I usually have a chorus beginning in most of them but in, in that one song I didn't and I thought I really want to put a chorus here my heart content so I would highlight this I would right click it and I would copy it and I'm not going to do this right now but you would copy it and then you know you just hit, hit copy and you put it here and we can do it. So we'll put it here and it'll put it there. So let's, now, when I deleted this range, if I want to put it back, I would just do an undo and not recopy, of course. But let's assume it was never there in the first place. So let's do copy, put the cursor where you want it, come down here and hit paste. And let's see how, now what it has to do, it has to push everything out and put that course right there so that it does what you wanted it to do. Now, it can be a little time consuming. So here we have copying events and six minutes and 35 seconds. The reason why is number one, a copy, especially with the vocals, with this little line here explained in other tutorials, has pitch correction, Melodyne pitch correction on it and some other processing. It has all the plugins and everything. Everything ha has to be copied over here and it's gonna take time, you can see it, but it's doing it, see? While it's doing it, come here, if 
I can't actually it's doing it so I can't move the scroll bar. But this is the intro in the purple. It inserted the chorus and there's the verse. So now that's a way if you want to move a chorus forward, you can. If you want to move anything, you can move the bridge. I don't like where the bridge is, I want it over here. Okay, do it. Just remember that the beginning of the section and the end of the section, you have to visually look down and see when this copies over, okay, and I can't scroll down because it's in the middle of the copy. When this copies over, that hard guitar, power guitar slide in, oh, there it's done. That power guitar slide in is only this part of it, see? The, the front part's not there. So what would I have done to have resolved that? And the tail end of this isn't. Before I copied it, now you're going to think this is crazy. Before I copied it, let's see if we go to a, here. Okay, before I copied this, before you copy it, look down to see if anything's crossing over again. Again, making copies and deleting ranges like this is a major production decision. So take the time to double check that things are either going to cut off because you have them crossing over that line, that boundary. It's very simple. What I would do here, and I, I do it pretty quick. Oh, that's going to cut off. I want this in the beginning of that one because look, what happened was it cut off the front of it. See? And then, well, there's two things you can do. I believe, actually, you could do this. Ha! Remember, Studio One is non-destructive. So, I could do that. Now, snap, snapping the grid, so I'm going to just take that off. And I, there, it preserved it. Isn't that cool? I love non-destructive. Or, what I could have done was take this, take this, snap to grid. And this is just another way. Put it to a grid like that. Right, so now I'm looking, it is one, two bars in front of the chorus. Just move it out of the way. Copy it, and then when you get over there, just move it one, two in front, and then retrim it. A little tedious, but it's non destructive, so you can do stuff like that. But if it really cut off stuff, like sometimes there's a whole section here that was already, see, this one wasn't cut, but this was already cut. So there was another section here that's gone. and you know, you have you have to go get it. Well, actually, that was probably more non-destructive. But if there was something that was separate by itself, like this here, you have to sometimes move it out of the way, move it within the range, do the copy, and then pull them back out and just use snap to grid to line it and just remember where you put it. So the non-destructive actually saves you time. But either way, you just have to be careful at the beginning of the range and the end of the range that you look and see, make sure that if you have anything crossing over, that you adjust for that. And uh, that's enough of that stuff. Okay, so that is that. There's a couple more things here that I want to just go over. Uh, select events in the section. So if you wanted to select all the events, like you would select something, like if you just highlighted and selected it, right? You can just do that by right clicking and click on that. Copy or move to scratch pad. Scratch pad is a feature in Studio One that if you use the scratch pad, it'll open up a section here to the right, and it's like the same th same thing as your song, but you can move or copy stuff there. Say you want to try something out, but you don't want to do it within your song. You don't want to hurt your song. You just want to scratch pad. It's like scratch pad, right? That's what you use a scratch pad for. And you want to play with it and everything and see if you like it and make decisions and then get rid of the scratch pad and come back and do what you finally decided in the scratch pad. I don't use the scratch pad after all that, right? Uh, I just don't, but it's a cool thing. Create markers from a range of sections that would create markers here in the beginning of each one of them, which is cool because I like having markers in my sections usually. Cut is obvious, you cut the section, copy, delete. Duplicate would duplicate it, would add it again. And duplicate shared, I'm not sure what that does. I think it sends it, you can send it out to other people or something. That one I don't know. So that one we, you have to look up on. I just never use that. I've used copy, I've used delete range, pretty much copy and delete range. So I copy a section of course somewhere or I delete a section out. Okay, that's it for the arranger track. It's pretty cool stuff. Sorry the video went a little long, but I think it's, it's well worth knowing how it works because it, it can it just adds more creativity to your toolkit of creativity stuff awesome please if you like this please subscribe because there's more stuff coming and other things on my channel and more stuff coming on all those things so you know 
I, I, I highly recommend to subscribe and, and, and get to know when things come out. And it also helps me out too. That's cool. And please like it if you liked it. And please definitely share it because we want to help each other or put things and or put things into the comments and things that you have done, maybe with your Ranger track or how you would do that in Pro Tools and just like do a quick blurb and say, yeah, in Pro Tools, you can do it. Hey, so I, you know, doesn't matter what doll you're using. It, we're, we're all community of artists and, and friends and, and people trying to help each other. So cool stuff. So please subscribe, please like, and please definitely share and have an awesome, beautiful, creative, artistic day. Take care. Bye.